All right, let me grab my bits, my bits and pieces. Grabbing my bits and pieces. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Yay, I'm back. Uh, hi. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be back. Hi. Come say hello. I'm spelling it wrong to me. Well, Elaine Marilacos Hedelson here with Astrology Mojo and um, want to help you get your mojo back. Pow, pow. Yes, I do. Okay, I feel like I've been away for a millennia. I have. Um, so many things are changing. Uh, two new bathrooms, new kitchen countertop, and we're not done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, track lighting and some painting and okay and I was sneezing for three weeks then I got sick then I went away to just chill and uh, now I'm back good morning Shelby hello Sage hello Elizabeth it's so great to be back and uh, okay we're going to be talking about the mercury and retrograde in Pisces it's mostly in Pisces about five six days in Aquarius but um yeah okay I went away and I look a little pale yeah it's been sneezy allergy season here hey Cindy's here great to see you back I am good morning you've missed me I've missed me <laughs> where have I been ah lost 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 nobody can tell me what I can or cannot do John from lost right? Who's a fan of Lost? Mm -hmm. I've seen it like three times. Okay, so um, today we're going to just delve in and have a good time and have some fun and really talk about this retrograde and where it's going to show up in different houses. So if you know where Pisces is and Aquarius, it's going to teeter back and forth. And let me just show you something here screenshot of the day okay so this is today's screenshot and we are looking at um the sun is in aquarius but not for long um tomorrow it moves into uh, pisces and then we have look at the mercury and neptune are within um five degrees and that and they're both in pisces so if you have anything in Pisces, you will feel this the most. Sun, rising, moon, Mars, Venus, Mercury, uh, Saturn, Jupiter, anything in Pisces, you will feel this. It's a very nebulous uh, energy. And what it does is nothing to you. That's right. It uh, It's just your timing, right? Oh, what's my spiel? For those of you who are new to me, and you may not know that I say that the planets don't make you do anything. Let me just put this away for a bit. The planets don't make you do anything. You live in a cooperation with the cosmos so that when the planets make a move, you feel it. When you make a move, the planets reflect that by way of aspects and angles in astrology. Basically, astrology tells you what time it is. What time is it? It's now. That's what time it is. <laughs> it's always now. Always. That's the time. But let me tell you, this particular Pisces retrograde which began on February 16th, but we were in the shadow phase for two weeks prior. So you would have noticed that. Uh, and then it continues through March 9th, but it will, um, you know, add on 10, 15 days, depending on who you are. Um, <laughs> look at my newly expanded huge space. Yes, we just remodeled. Isn't it adorable? <laughs> the paint chips are everywhere. And I've got people coming and going and asking for espressos. I don't get it. <laughs> okay, so I have these cards my husband got for me, the Colette Baron Reed Crystal Spirit Oracle deck, which is a fun deck if you don't know it. Uh, she's got awesome stuff. And uh, we're going to pull a card later, but now I'm just getting used to them because they're new and they're sticking together. I got them for Christmas, but I haven't used them that much. And uh, some of the crystals, and I used to sell crystals and work with crystals all the time back in Jersey. Uh, there are some new things coming out I have never heard of before. And the vibration is changing on this earth so much that suddenly a new thing will come to you like this crystal. 
was mine, you know, 30 years ago, okay? And there's little tiny striations in the sides. You see those lines going horizontally in this crystal? Okay, now this is called the Atlantean crystal. Okay, it used to be a teacher crystal. Now it's the Atlantean. So there's a whole lot of terminology out there. Uh, people are changing pronouns. Um, new crystals are being found and named. You know, it's a cycle. So what we're looking at here too is we want to up your vibe, right? You're a mojo mystic. Are you not a mojo mystic? Yes, you are. And that means you know how to say no. You know how to set boundaries. You know how to be compassionate to yourself and to others. That above all during this Mercury and retrograde in Pisces, it is about compassion and service, but not ever at the sake of yourself. Let's just remember something. Um, Saturn, Neptune, I'm sorry, Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter are in the, uh, are in Capricorn, okay? So what this means is, and also South Node, and now Mars. Mars is in Capricorn. Listen up, Capricorn, Sun, Rising, Moon, or Mars in Capricorn. Or if you have Mars or Capricorn on your sixth house, do not speed. Do not defy the law. <laughs> You're going to want to defy gra defying gravity. You're going to want to do that? No. <laughs> You're going to get grounded and you're going to get reprimanded. So pay attention to your beef with authority. Oh, yeah. Because now comes the time where you can say, you know, you, call, you get a, which I have for 14 times already got a notice like, uh, you are delinquent in this payment. It's like, oh, you know, dude, last July I made this payment. And then I called again and I made the payment. Uh, because I thought I didn't, but I did. So I got refunded. And then I called because they got another, they sent me another notice that, you know, you didn't make this payment. I was like, listen, <laughs> then I put forth an energy of, I expect you to be at your highest. I didn't say that, but that was my expectation. And it's okay to have a healthy expectation. Let's put it a different way. I used to say, never have an expectation because it leads to disappointment. Um, do the Jedi master thing, you know, these are not the droids you're looking for. Yeah. It's like, I've already paid the bill. Let's work this out. Oh, yeah. So I have to make it because I got last week I had another notice. <laughs> I'm just laughing. I'm going to have to call. I have a Capricorn rising. Mars is in Capricorn. I am ready to like beat them to a pulp. No, I'm not. No, because we're all about compassion and kindness and, you know, getting things done in a different way. So what do we have? We have some comments here. Uh, Shelby says Pisces sun. Okay. So Pisces sun rising and moon, you're going to want to get lost. You're going to want to feel like you're going to get lost. You're going to, you might feel like you're getting sick. You might feel like I'm overdone. Um, Jen says fifth house in Pisces and uh, Aquarius, um, Venus and Jupiter and Pisces. Okay. So this is a very creative time for you and a little bit of a romantic time too. Can be. Uh-huh. And it doesn't mean if you don't have someone in your life um, that you go out and you just find the per first person who walks by and go grab and go, yeah, come on, let's go have some fun. I mean, you could if you were 20, right? Uh, with a lot of protection. But uh, <laughs> but now it's it's imagining. This is for everyone. Imagining, visualizing. What's your ideal vision for that scenario, for any scenario? What do you want to create right now? Mercury is conjunct Neptune. Your inner communication and perceptions are, first of all, the past comes back. And I mean the way past, the karmic past, the creative past, a, a blip of a memory like a little bubble will float in and it could be a person. You know, I call them, my sister and I call them sightings. It could be a person a place, a memory, a thought. Oh, what's this one that wants to come out? Hematite. I know hematite. Okay. Hematite. Hematite is very healing physically and very grounding. Where's my hematite? Of course, it's not in front of me. Um, ba -ba -bee. Now there's several kinds of hematite and some of the shiny black. Oh, wait, I see one. I can't reach it. Oh my God. I'm going to do a disappearing act. Close your eyes, boys and girls. <laughs> Ah, and gender non-specific? Okay, here's a version of hematite. 
right? It's very shiny, galactic looking, futuristic. And then there's some that looks broken up, choppy and dark green. So uh, hematite really is calling to you to, to focus on a healing, to focus on a thing that um, has been carried over from the past. It's just like a memory. And that memory, you know, it hangs out, it does things you don't want it to do, like warns you, like, don't do that. It's so sad. It'll happen again. You're like, wait, I changed. I've transformed. Stop it, memory. Stop it. Just cut it out. Quit it. <laughs> but they're going to come back. Okay, let's everybody have a little, join me in my cafe. <laughs> Okay. Um, hey, listen, Vicky's here. My Mars is in Capricorn and also Capricorn Sun, but I have Mercury retrograde in my natal chart. Okay, you're going to shine. Those who are, thank you for the reminder, sweetie. Those who are born in a Mercury in retrograde, now it's like things lock into place, the seatbelt gets put on, and you're like, oh, I get it now. I see what it is now. But to also have Mars in Capricorn with the Mars now transiting in Capricorn, uh, to have uh, Capricorn Sun, um, listen up, everybody. The Capricorn energy is all about creating uh, a structure, an architecture. Like you're the architect, but you're creating a new structure. Like deconstruction comes first with Pluto and Capricorn. And that's for everyone. But where does it show up in your life? Wherever you have Capricorn, it's being deconstructed. And then it's being reconstructed. So that can mean, you know, new bathrooms, new kitchen. It could mean cleaning out your closets. It can mean your body is undergoing a healing phase. And you might need dental work or, you know, you get a, one of those DEXA scans. You know, it's a bone density. And they're like, yeah, you need a little bit more calcium. But I'll tell you what, certain kinds of calcium uh, really aren't great. For your body okay so you want to research the best kinds of calcium you want to look at what else you can do to support there's certain homeopathics that can help your dentures your dentatures is that a word uh your bones um i think it's calc calcarea carbona something or calcarea phosphate these help to rebuild the structure of the bones it's homeopathic but research okay um, and the structure of your life, where you're going, where you're headed, what you want. W what do you want? A and with this Pisces retrograde, first you got to clear out some of the cobwebs, right? You got to let go of some of those things that, and, and so the dreams for some of you, some of us, many of us, are going to seem so vivid. I had a dream last week when I was uh, in Casadega, Florida. It is one of the um, spiritual reader centers of the world. Uh, also, Lilydale is another where I used to uh, work and teach. It's where the uh, certified mediums come from. Um, also, Sedona, where I live, and other places around the world have this very connected energy to spirit. And so I went with a friend, we reconnected, and we've been planning a, a gal pal trip for over 10 years. What time is it? <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> it's time to get out of town. So we went and just had readings. You know, we we're very specific. And this is what I recommend if you're looking to get different information, because the information that comes to a person will come through their perception, their experience, their karmic awareness their dimensional shift, right? There. So for every reader, there is a person to go with them uh, or to listen to them or, you know, you'll vibe with. So I suggested to my friend that we take the same three, four or five questions and couch them in a what is the value of working with this person or how, what, how, or when, um, or can you give me insights too? Because if you ask like, will I win the lottery? Well, you know, yes or no, open-ended questions are, are, are meaningless. Um, of course, we all wanna win the lottery, but what kind of lottery? Maybe you already won the romantic lottery 
maybe your health's not so great, but you have the love of your life. So, you know, when you ask questions in a session, this is a sidebar, I'm taking a little road trip because we're getting lost in a Mercury and retrograde in Pisces. <laughs> Did I bring my lunch with me? No, but I am at a cafe. I can eat anything I want. Oh, oh, um, a waitress. Um, so when you're looking to glean information, because you're a mystic, you're a mojo mystic in the making. You know, people will say to me, oh, you a psychic? You know, oh, you're an astrologer. Well, I want to I want to have a psychic reading. It's like, listen, um, whatever a person calls themselves, they're all things. It's what they've honed, right? So you know, I am a modern mystic. I incorporate starseed, angelic information, cards. Wait a minute. These fun, uh, I'm going to roll them. These fun die that are planetary, I'm sorry, sign, houses, planetary. Uh, anything you utilize, you can open up a newspaper after having done a meditation and, and asking to be shown what's the mo most important thing to focus on today. And you open up any section and you'll see, uh, you know, well, financial awareness. It's like, oh, wow, okay, fin my financial awareness. Or, you know, they won an Oscar because they were deemed, what, the most entertaining. Oh, what, what, I need some entertainment in my life. Or maybe I'm writing a book or creating a show, you know, whatever. So you want to look at during this retrograde, I know I kind of did the Pisces circuitous route to get there. And that is when you're looking for information in a Pisces retrograde, you do not go head on. Capricorn goes head on. Mars, it, Mars goes head on, right? Right. All the planets represent a different part of you, and so when you are in a Pisces, Mercury in retrograde, what you can do is focus on being present, because when you're present, what happens? Uh, all energies can now vibe with you and say, "No." Uh, here's what I find really fascinating. When you're vibing out something, a new job opportunity, or maybe a, um, you know, a new friend, or, you know, you want to paint your kitchen a certain color, you're not certain. So this is a really good time to gather information, gather intel, paint chips, uh, dream journals, you know, really get into meditating now, or music or entertainment, movies, videos, um, instructional how-to videos, uh, anything on YouTube that is pertinent to your topic, because you will be shown something in a Mercury and retrograde, especially in Pisces, that suddenly brings up that bubble, that memory, that dream, that, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that existed. I didn't know you could do that. I, I didn't know that was possible or I knew it was possible, but I forgot what, like what's wrong with me? Why did I forget how to use certain crystals or how to do the I Ching or how to communicate with my divine self? That's the big one. That's the big one. Let me roll these because they're heating up in my hand and they want to play but I don't want to roll them so hard like I did last time and they fell on the floor. <laughs> they fell on the floor. All right, come on, lucky seven. <laughs> All right, information is what we're looking for, for the Pisces, Mercury, and retrograde, for anyone watching. Now, you may be watching this in a replay, and it may not be Mercury retrograde any longer, but the information will still apply. Let's focus on what will help you the most. What will help you the most? Okay, so, oh, interesting. So this is what's happening. Capricorn. Capricorn came out, right? That's the moon. Okay. The moon is what's happening. It's how you feel. It's the nebula. It's the feeling. It's the, the emotions around that. I need to get lost. I need to take a break. I'm overwhelmed. I need the sugar. I need, you know, my edibles. I need something. I need that drink. I need that illusion. I need that distraction. So we're looking at what emotions are causing you to want to hide. Um, so that's 
the situation, how it feels is restrictive, but also very empowering. So with Capricorn, it feels like you're, you're maturing. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you don't want to grow. Not grow up, but grow. So that's how it feels. And where is it taking place? In house three, blah, in house three, communication and perceptions. How perfect is that? So what I want you to focus on is your feeling, any feeling or emotion that comes up during the day when you suddenly, you know, it's like you're, you're cleaning the floor and, and, you're, and suddenly you feel so much calmer. Like, okay, I'm sweeping and whew, I, let, I let something go. Or it's the opposite, you know, you've got an agenda, you've got so much to do, and you don't feel empowered, you feel burdened. Mercury, mama, Mercury retrograde, uh, with all this Capricorn energy, you might start to feel like, well, it's my job, I should do it, my shoulders are burning, you know, I have to lift the thing and drill it and get the, you know, and it's like, my shoulders are hurting. Well, what are you doing? Why are you being so stingy with love, with yourself? You are pure conscious love, right? Remember that. You're a mojo mystic in the making. What, what are you? What, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? That's the house three voice of reason. What's your perception, dude and dudettes and those of non-specific gender? <laughs> What's the perception? Now, let's look at... Um, I'm going to get my, my screen. How's everybody doing? Anybody else here want to come say hello to me? Hello. <sighs> okay, I will be back. Of course, my desk has paperwork all over it. And I can't even see. The um, blah, blah, la la. The 20th? The, 21st, the 20th. I'll be back on the 20th. That is Thursday, correct? Oh, boy, are we going to have fun. Both my client and I the other day forgot that we had a session. <laughs> we called each other half an hour later. It's like, oh, I was on my way out the door to go food shopping. And I totally spaced. And he totally spaced. It's like, it's okay. Yeah, we'll get it done. So hang on. All right. All right. Now let's look at what is happening for each house with Mercury in retrograde. Now I want to get a bi wheel on my thing. All right, let's see, bear with me. Oh, okay, great. So Pisces, this particular, uh, Pisces and Pisces rising, this, this is for sun and rising. Uh, this particular uh, retrograde for you is, is really changing your mind. What is it that makes you want to hide, run away, become addicted? Um, latch on to something that is addictive, uh, that is too fun. Yeah, we're just going to have fun. But then there's responsibility and things have to get done and um, you're avoiding those things. What is that for you? That's what this retrograde is going to bring up. And then um, when we move into the retrograde in Aquarius, which is March 4th-ish through the 9th-ish, um, then for Pisces, Pisces rising, what that means is you really have to go deep into a psychological pattern that was set up in your early years and start to break that idea of victim and move into more of a collective, um, oh, communal, like this is fun, but I don't have to overeat. I don't have to overindulge. I don't have to sleep in. I don't have to get drunk. I don't have to be negative. I don't have to be cynical. I don't have to be such a starry eyed Pollyanna and believe everything I hear. I don't have, I can set a boundary based on my needs and be okay with it without explanation. You don't have to, well, the reason I don't want to go is because, you know, well, um, you know, this thing happened and then that, sh 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 nobody needs to know your business. It's okay. You no know, means no. No doesn't mean I hate you. You're stupid. You're fat or ugly. No means no. Thank you. Okay. Pisces, Pisces rising. Let's go there. Aries. You also have Venus in your sign right now. So magnetism, pull it out of the hat, pull it out of the closet. If you are born with a Venus in Aries, 
<sighs> put on a little lipstick. Doesn't matter if you're a guy or not. <laughs> Put on a little chapstick. <laughs> You're ready to like get into the thing. What's the thing? What what excites you? What what is spontaneous for you? But then with the perception going on in your twelfth house, um, Aries, you're wondering, oh, did I forget? You know, it's like uh, Patrick Nagel um, was a very brilliant artist in the eighties. He passed away too young. And he, one of his cartoons, was they were very retro looking. And one of his things was a, a woman looking distressed, you know, very cartoon, like a Batman cartoon. And, and her thought bubble was, oh, my gosh, I forgot to have children. You know, <laughs> it was like, did I forget something? Aries, Aries rising. And you're coming to a place of really wanting to connect with a certain group. Um, you know, in a retrograde, we don't want to go too far into new uh, you can meet someone that you may never see again, but new, um, uh, you know, you don't always get the full information in a retrograde, especially in a Pisces retrograde. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, so that new group, Aries, Aries rising, uh, really comes with some thought. What, what vibes with you now? You might want to do be in service now. You might want to be healing something emotional, uh, physical, intellectual. Maybe you've been, maybe let's focus on that sabotage issue where you jump off a cliff before you understand if there's water down below or if you're wearing a parachute, you know, so you just want to take that into account. Um, Aries, sun and rising. And what's your perception? I would say get some counseling, get some body work done, get some energy work done, get a reading. This is a great time for that. And then your, your tribe will come into view. Okay, Taurus, Taurus sun, Taurus rising. Well, not only do you have um, Uranus in your sign right now, um, digging up the dust and the mucky muck that doesn't need to be there anymore. It's helping you to create a value system now that includes you as an authority. Yeah, you, uh-huh, you as an authority. Okay, yay. Um, but with this particular Pisces deal, I would say, um, who's your tribe? Who do you want to be with? Who do you want to play with? Who do you want to work with? You're going to be meeting a lot of people in and out of this retrograde Taurus sun and Taurus rising. And it's going to speak to you regarding uh, how, how you want to create, how you want to have fun, who you want to be with. You know, it's like, hey, you're fun, but you're not toxic and you're not negative and you're not cynical and you're not so spacey that, you know, you, you're so elusive. You're finding those grounded people who have a strong sense of spirituality uh, or creativity or, and they're, they're working on their craft and that's going to help you uh, work on your sense of direction and career, Taurus sun, Taurus rising. So yeah, new tribe indeed. And just remember that just because someone enters your life in a retrograde and you feel like, oh, well, let's hold hands and skip. We're best friends, you know, and it can be that where you just need that validation, but then you never hear from that person again, right? So you want to be careful of like blubbing your entire life story <laughs> to someone because it feels like this is my best friend, my BFF, you know, and uh, and that that need that you have to really connect is so strong right now. So, you know, try out different things. Think about different types of clubs or groups. And, you know, but again, initiating new in a Pisces retrograde, it can show you something that might be missing in your life that you feel is missing. But it doesn't mean those people or that collective group is meant to stay. So you have to weigh what feels right and do a lot of research. Make sense? Okay. Gemini, sun, Gemini rising. Okay. So, um, yeah, you, there's a lot of patterns being shaken up in you because of that Uranus and Taurus. Um, but let's look at your career. Okay. And, and also life direction and career doesn't always mean, you know, your nine to five job. It can mean your training to do something else. It can mean your your desire to get out of boredom and frustration is is ready to take that leap of yeah whatever somebody rides by on a motorcycle and you want to hop on and go yeah you know let the 
my hair blow in the wind, you know, I want to feel the dust on my face. Okay, that's fun for a little while. But um, if you suddenly up and quit your job, or if you suddenly up and make a declaration during this uh, Pisces retrograde, it's going to feel like it falls flat uh, in mid-March when you go, oh, wait a minute, that was a little premature. Yeah, so Gemini, Sun, Gemini rising, Take a look at where your service is, where you want to be contributing, what makes you feel great. And you could be watching more movies now, listening to more music, going out, uh, listening to comedy, uh, really incorporating um, a higher vision of how to make your contribution. It doesn't matter if you work in a part-time job, if you're at home with the kids, if you're retired, you still have a contribution. So what is it that you want to be giving? right? Where is it that you want to be serving, but not at the sake of yourself? And that's for everyone, not at the sake of yourself. Okay, cancer, cancer, sun, cancer rising. All right, you're still in the energy of a, uh, an eclipse. So you know, you're feeling this big time. Anyway, there's lots of influx and you're like, Oh, you know, <laughs> and, and because there's so much Capricorn going on opposing you, it's not really opposing you. It's bringing out the gem in you. It's like coal mining. The universe is coal mining you, Cancer, Cancer rising. And um, there's going to be a lot of work that comes your way. But do you need to take all of it? You can say no. It's okay to say no. It sets a boundary to what you really want to be doing. So let's take a look with this particular retrograde. It is mm, positive in the way that it is a water sign retrograde and uh, then an air sign and they they compliment you in uh, let's see how you do business how you set up business the contracts that you have maybe it's about upping your game maybe it's about becoming the mentor maybe it's about hanging out a shingle saying yeah I do this I am a professional and maybe it's about going back to school to get some extra training. Maybe it's about creating a training course. Maybe it's your perception of the long term. It's like because Aquarius is going to be hovering in your uh, house of money and joint resources. And you might be thinking, okay, estate planning, but there's incoming. There's a lot of incoming for Cancer Sun and Rising Sign. And it can be through your spouse uh, or it can be through an inheritance as well. And people don't always have to die for you to have an inheritance. But um, think about how to allot your funds to uh, what legacy would you like to leave? You know, you may be paying off your kids college education right now, or maybe uh, you're hiring your child. My sister's a cancer and she just hired her son, um, who was born in a Mercury in retrograde to do stuff around the house. And so, oh, oh, you know, sidebar for everyone. If you know that someone was born in a Mercury in retrograde, this is their time to shine. So even though I don't recommend upgrading technology or, you know, having major revisions done to your home office space, your body, uh, if you're working with someone you know was born in a Mercury in retrograde, they will see things you do not. Case in point, we're thinking of painting our kitchen cabinets. Uh, we just had the floor done. My nephew did the floor and uh, we had a new countertop put in. And then we look at the cabinets and go, what? White? Gray? Everything's white and gray. So my nephew had this brilliant idea. How about the bottom, a certain color gray that pulls from the countertop? And how about the cabinets at the top, uh, white? So it, we have a contrast so that when you walk into a room, you're not, you don't feel like you're walking into a flat, you know, background. And we're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I didn't even think of that. So just keep that in mind. Okay, Cancer, Cancer Rising, it's also time for you to um, acknowledge your own worth and talents and to not be afraid to promote yourself and market yourself and let people know what you do because you're great at it, Right. And, and even if it's, oh, I can watch the kids or I'll take the kids on Sunday or let's have a party at our house and I'll, we, you know, I'll make all the crafts. Or you could be in a corporate position and saying, I'm ready to, um, to, to up my game. I'm ready to up my level and do something a little different. Yeah. All right. 
So Leo, sun, Leo rising. Is this making sense? Is this helping people? Let me see. Let me check in with everybody. Hey, Deborah's here. Hey there, Taurus. Pisces rising. Missed you. Missed you too. Thanks, lovey. Uh, Lindsay, hi, Taurus. And uh, Tony, Pisces is your sun. And cool. So remember Pisces, sun rising and moon so that you don't get lost. It's important that you have an anchor and a time frame. A time frame. You know, you're on the phone. La 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 la. Oh my gosh, four hours later. It's like one of those Batman things spins around. Da -da 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 Pow! <laughs> what just happened? Have a time frame. Um, where was I going? Where was I going? Leo. Thank you. You see? Getting lost. Getting lost. I want to take a sip for just a moment. in my cafe. Okay. Leo, sun, Leo rising. Okay. You're a fire sign and Pisces is a water sign, but there's something about you and Pisces that understands one another. Um, you understand the burst of enthusiasm and you understand the negation, the cynicism, the wound. So, with and then we're going to move into Aquarius, which is your exact opposite. So, um, let's see what's the best way to say this. You make money, you spend money, you share money, you expect something in return. And if it's not money, it can be sex. If it's not sex, it can be sensuality. If it's not sensuality, it can be romance. If it's not that, it can be I feel like I was owed something. Or it can be uh, Leo, Leo rising, I feel, all right, we're going to start with the I feel words, I feel like I have a, a debt to pay. Or, or I feel guilty about something. This is going to go deep for you and it's going to show up in your bank account. So think about this. When things are going great, and the, and the checks are coming in, or the abundance is coming in, or the opportunities are coming in, you're like, yeah, riding high. Yeah, this is great. I do deserve this. I have worked hard. And then suddenly when things start to dwindle, you're like doom and gloom. Uh, it's always been this way. You know, my father wouldn't let me have the dollar unless I scrubbed all the floors, you know. So you want to be careful of going to extremes with your emotions, number one. Number two, I would not begin a new investment program right now with anyone, but now's the time to do your research. Does that make sense, Leo, Leo rising? Um, and also where are you in a deficit? You may be someone who's like uh, maybe, um, an artisan, a counselor, um, maybe you work at a hospital or perhaps you're a freelancer and you give and you give and you give and you give and you, give and you <laughs> You know, and then you're ex like, there's the expectation. It's like, well, I put into the coffers. How come I'm not getting back? So this karmic pattern, and it is a karmic pattern for you um, to go into the deep dive wound of I'm not enough. It's not enough. They're not enough. You want to be aware of that and start focusing on gratitude. You know, they disappointed you. Okay, feel your feelings, then turn around and move into, but you know, they did what they they did whatever they did. I have dominion over the way I feel, so I'm going to transmute that energy, uh, little by little. EFT tapping, chanting, breathing, meditation, uh, working with you know cards or uh, getting a reading or uh, prayer. Anything that you can exercise is going to be really important for you. Exercise your power. All right, Leo, Leo rising. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, hey, Casey's here. Hi, we did Aries already. And we did Gemini. That's your rising. Okay, now we're moving on to Virgo. Virgo, Virgo. <laughs> All right, Virgo is going to feel like the world is spinning. Stop the world. I want to get off. Mm-hmm. Is your opposite. And your opposite is showing you also what you don't like about your partner. 
and how suddenly they might have moved into a victim place when you've been giving, 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 and now they are demanding, 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 and you're like, wait a second. Hang on a second. Give me a hot minute here. What the hell? So now's a good time to not mollify, but mitigate the judgment so that you can have a conversation around, um, wow, and validate and validate self and other, especially merit, marital partners or a lover or a business partner. Um, and they might be saying, we really expected you to be doing this thing. It's like, oh my God, you just want to slap them. And you stop and go, okay, I'm going to let that go. I'm going to let all aggression go. Mars, Mars is in Capricorn. <laughs> and it's not doing it to you. It's the feeling of, I've had it. I've been working, 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 doing, doing, doing. Okay. And the criticism that you feel for yourself or them uh, comes up. So now it's validate, wow, you look like you're having a really rough day or moment or time or situation with this project. How can I help you? That's where you go. How can I help you? And if I can help you, I will. But if the time frame doesn't allow, I will do my best. Everyone, no matter your sun rising or moon or where any planetary system is in your brain, or in your chart, we do not make promises in a Mercury in retrograde that we do not fulfill because they will haunt you. <laughs> so if you go, yeah, I can do the bake sale over at the thing, you know, you better start cooking now. Okay. Because suddenly you're going to get distracted by 47 other things. And then come the day of the bake sale, they're expecting something from you. And you know, six little donuts isn't going to cut it. Right. So that's what I'm talking about. Virgo sun, Virgo rising. This can be a really magical time with a partner if you let down defenses and you validate, but don't invalidate you in the process. Okay, how many of you minimize yourself so that you don't make somebody else feel bad? Yeah, no more. We're not going to do that. Or the opposite, where it's like, yeah, I've got the scroll of accomplishments and blah, 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 blah. And people are like, I don't. I can't even, I don't even know what to say. So they feel small. Okay, so we don't want to go to extremes is what I'm saying. No extremes, done. So why does this say it is too loud? Am I too loud? I don't know, we're in a Mercury in retrograde. I don't understand. I hope you can hear me. Can everyone hear me? My microphone's on. All right, Libra, Libra rising. Where are we going to go in this particular retrograde? Well, there's a lot going on in your home environment, number one. There's moving, there's renovation, there's selling, there's uh, refinancing, there's um, possible mother issues, you being the mother or having the mother that will not leave you alone <laughs> in patterns or in actual, hi, what are you doing? You want to go out? <laughs> it's like, no, mom, I'm working, <laughs> right? So Libra, Libra rising, you've already got that going on. And so there's a... I don't know. It feels like a suppressed, oppressed sadness that it's too much. Everything is too much, too much, too much. So we want to find ways to blow off steam without smashing into uh, other people. Yeah, right. Um, and then we want to take care of our health. So if, if health. So if you're feeling Libra, Libra rising, and it also deals with work, but let's talk about health first. That this frustration, um, I would highly recommend a non-violent or aggressive form of martial arts. So Tai Chi or Qigong, energy work, yoga. Even if you've never done it before, now is a great time to join that club, to take that class. Because this is a necessary component of your surviving and thriving through this particular retrograde. Okay, and then we move back into romance for you and creativity so that you can then reconnect in a different way once you let go and let off steam uh, from this position, right? So let me see. And let me show you again the screenshot if you're just showing up. Um, we've got uh, Mars, I'm going to list them, Mars, South Node, Jupiter, 
Pluto, Saturn, all in Capricorn. And the Capricorn vibe is helping you to uh, take responsibility for something, helping you to grow, helping you to look back 19 to 20 years and saying, what was I doing then? that was productive? Why don't I revisit that? What was I doing then that was destructive? Why don't I stop that? And then with the Mercury and Neptune conjunct in Pisces, we're looking at the perception of your karma and your ideal vision. And if you've got any way, shape, form of wound, you know, it's not going to let you go forward. You know, how you vibrate what resonance you have, the frequency that you have is what brings things into your life. So um, if you're angry, you will bring anger to match that or someone to mollify, to show the, uh, to echo the resonance of your anger. And, and, you know, they could be really sweet and kind and you're just like, get out of my way. You know, it's like I was in line and, and then suddenly someone really calm or young or old comes into the picture and you are suddenly so aware of the echo, echo, echo of your own resonance, your own frequency. So that's what's happening for everyone right now. So again, you want to up your vibe, you want to raise your level of mojo mystic and understand that the more compassion you have for self and others, that frequency is going to, I can't, what's the term for times 10? It's just going to billow into this beautiful blessing so that it doesn't matter what sun rising or moon you are, that the vibration that you have, if you start trusting and believing and then let go of the thing, I know that my needs are met, my needs are met, my needs are met, even if I don't know how to meet them, let that go into the universe. And then the perception and your karma come together and form a new thought. And then suddenly that new thought repeats, you know, my needs are met, my needs are met, my needs are met, even if I don't know how to meet them. That implies that you start to trust something greater than yourself. Okay, and that greater than yourself, angel, starseed, passed on loved one, uh, energy, light workers, uh, friends down the block, strangers you don't know, they will be called to come in and assist you. Okay, this is a magical time. So make use of the energy and up your vibe. Okay. um, So Libra, I want to see you really taking care of your health right now. There might be some congestion issues because of all this Pisces energy or ankles might be off, which is indicative of maybe too much sugar. Uh, If you look at the right side of your body, the the line that runs up the ankle, the knee, the hip, the breast shoulder area, you know, if you're feeling maybe a network chiropractor, uh, NSA person could help move some energy for you um, and some yoga. And then you will judge less. And as you judge less, what happens is you become less resistant to allowing yourself to receive because you can be pretty like, no, oh, that's all right. I got it. I got this. And it's like, well, maybe you don't. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Scorpio sun, a Scorpio rising sign. Again, like cancer, this is complimentary because you are a water sign. However, you're a power water sign and Pisces is a nebulous water sign. So you might get a little frustrated that things are not moving in the direction you want. And that's going to make you either want to (laughs) cry, hit something, we hope not someone, or, um, you know, like grab the thing that, that, you know, the, the drink or the pill or the sugar or the crunchy or the carb or the, you know, you might want to do too much of that. So just be aware of not going to extremes on the physical sense, because that will not help you. Okay. But what will help you, and let's look at both of the Aquarius, because that is a fixed sign like you. Uh, this can be a really romantic time, Scorpio, Scorpio rising, if, and, and it can be a sexual time. But, but it's more romantic. And, it, and the distinction is that, you know, it's, it's about communing. It's about communing in such a beautiful way that you can hold someone's hand and, and just feel oh, loved. So that that urge to have that drink or eat that sugar or, you know, start a business, you know, <laughs> or venture capital, you know, it's like you calm down and go, this is enough right now. This is what I need right now. And I'm going to allow it. Okay, Scorpio sun, Scorpio rising, something to think on. Because this is all about your home life too. 
It's how do you want to set up those things in your home life and have more of creativity, playtime. Uh, if you're looking to have a baby, um, this would be an ideal time to conceive because you let down your defenses more. And if this is a time where you don't want to have a baby and you're playing around and having fun, great, have fun, use protection and really triple that protection. Because the perception is, oh yeah, I did the thing that's going to stop the baby making. And then you go, wait a minute, did I do the thing? <laughs> Whoa, oops. Um, yeah, you'll know, right? <laughs> In a few months. But so to let's be more responsible with that energy. And then the creation that comes out of that is really profound. And it can be, um, wow, I really do want to spend my life with this person or, oh my gosh, it's, and you know, okay, meeting somebody new in a retrograde for the first time, you don't get all the answers. You don't get the whole perception. It may feel good, but you're going to have to work at the relationship after the retrograde is over because suddenly they say, oh yeah, I've just got to get to work. And, and, and you say, oh, didn't you say you were working at a, you know, aviation company and you go, yeah, I'm a pilot and I'll be gone for three months at a time. You're like, wait a minute, wait, what just happened? You didn't tell me that, you know, things like that can happen in a Pisces retrograde where you don't know. Case in point, um, oh gosh, what's her name? Stand up comic. She's pretty brass, brassy, sassy. Ah, I can't think of her name. Uh, Kat, Kathy, Kath, not Kathleen Madigan. Oh my God. Well, anyway, she was at one point married to a, um, a Pisces guy and she started his business for him and funded him. And he was, you know, at the computer every day and she would, you know, checking in every few months, like, how's, how's it going? And I forget what he was selling online or whatever. And then she finds out, you know, it's all porn. He wasn't, he had no business. He had lied to her. He was just using her money. And it, I'm not going to say, I'm not saying that that's going to happen to you. I'm just saying that that's how lost we can get in a relationship if we meet someone in a Pisces retrograde. That's all I'm saying. It could be the most magical. I love this. And that's great for you. Perfect. Uh, all right. Sagittarius, Sag, sun, Sag, rising sign. We, uh, you just, uh, Mars just left your sign. So you're feeling a little better. You can breathe a little better. You're not feeling like you were shot out of a cannon. And why does my microphone say that I'm in the red? I don't know. I hope you can hear me. Can you give me a thumbs up? I guess somebody would be telling me if you couldn't hear me, right? All right. Um, hmm. So Capricorn, mm, sorry, Sagittarius, you um, are, well, hmm. You, I, I want you to take a look at your perception of your identity. Y yeah, it's about your four walls. You may be thinking, oh, I want to renovate. I want to paint. I want to move. Um, I want to have visitors, you know, or maybe they're unexpected visitors. The past always comes back in a retrograde. It can be somebody who's who just says, hey, I was in town blowing through for a week. Can I stay at your kind of crash? And you're like, sure. And then after three days, you're thinking, why did I say that? <laughs> they're slobs. They didn't even wash a dish. <laughs> you know, I have to pick up their socks. <laughs> yeah. So you want to set healthy parameters around your home environment, but also it can be a fun place. You might want to have a dinner party with all your friends, or you might want to have movie night or game night uh, repeatedly throughout the month just to lighten the vibe. Okay. But the other thing too, uh, with this retrograde is your ident your identity is really what's being mm, highlighted. So it's almost like a laser focus. So I want to grab my, my one, um, wand and it's like using a crystal wand where at one point you can't really see what's going on, but now with your identity, you're going to be able to see different levels of yourself and uh, where the cloudiness is, where uh, the confusion is. So this is a really great time, Sag, Sag Rising, to meditate more in your space and to embrace the idea of miracles. That you are the miracle, you are pure conscious love, you're a mojo mystic. That you can mutate energy, transmutate, transform something, even if it's a feeling that has been recurring. And that's what comes up. 
Why do I always feel this way when I talk to that person? Why do I always feel this way when it's 5 p.m.? Why do I always feel this way when I've eaten sugar? So once you understand the patterning, that's when you can start to stop the self-sabotage or the rote, you know, do it again, do it again. Ah, that's just what happens. No, it doesn't have to be what happens. You have a certain amount of power over your feelings, as I said up top. So think about that. Um... Oh, Elizabeth said, hearing you're fine. And your face freezes, but your voice goes on. Well, isn't that iron? I'm not a ventriloquist. <laughs> I'm not a ventriloquist, I promise. Well, the retrograde, oh, the retrograde. <laughs> We're just going to work with the retrograde. Pisces, Pisces, you nebulous little sphinxster. <gasps> what did I say? Oh, my gosh. Did I say that? Did I say that? Let's hope I froze completely on that. Okay. Uh, Sagittarius, let's get back to you. Sagittarius <laughs> and rising sign. You have the ability now to organize your thoughts in a way that does not cross your goal or your purpose because you say one thing and then you do another. And then you might not be doing the thing, but you have a judgment about them who is doing the thing. So you want to be aware of that during this retrograde. And that's what I'm talking about. Um, self identity comes up and what, who you really are. Remember, I talked about the vibe, you raise the level of vibration in you, you judge less. All right, have your hissy fit, set a timer for three minutes and then be done with it. You know, you're never ever going to get somebody out in the world to do exactly what you want consistently, you know, maybe once. And, but that's the perception that we have power over anything other than our own body, mind, and spirit. That's where you're going to go. Okay, Capricorn. Um, Capricorn, so much is going on. We've been talking for months about all this. The, the uh the heaviness, the burden, the healing of the body, the mind, the spirit, letting go of karma, past sabotaging techniques that you have become so crafty about. It's like, yeah, I have to go to the bathroom, but I'm going to answer that phone first. Or I'm going to check 14 emails and then I'll feed myself. So yeah. So when you realize you've become stingy with yourself, that's the moment you can break free and have an epiphany. And that epiphany, Capricorn, my cappies. I know I'm a cap rising. I get it. I love you. Uh, I feel for you, but I'm not going to hold your feelings anymore. You know, that's what you got to tell yourself. <laughs> You're not going to get handed a, 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 like a load of crap and you take it. You go, yeah, it's, yeah, it's what it is. No, it isn't what it is. It could be something else. Now that Mars is in your sign, Capricorn's sun and rising sign, um, you're going to say no quick, quicker and faster than ever before. And it's going to feel so good. Yeah. Because that identity translates into financial awareness. It does. The sooner you set that boundary, the sooner an opportunity comes your way. And it's the next level opportunity. It's uh, transformational on a technological level. So, you know, me... Uh, personally, I'm working on uh, an astro masterclass and recording and editing. So that eventually will bring in money. But the structure that I set around it, the energy that I put into it, the attitude I have about it as a Capricorn rising sign uh, is what it infuses itself into the product. So, so with you, okay, so when you are doing your thing in the world, uh, you want to have healthy boundaries, say no, don't over um, exert no overdoing, none of that. All right, it makes sense. Um, now Aquarius, last but never least, Aquarius sun, Aquarius rising sign. This is all about your self worth. And it's also about your money. So income, I want you to be really aware of uh, paperwork, receipts, uh, not assuming that the bank, you know, yeah, you make a deposit and they say, do you, would you like a receipt? And you go, nah, that's okay. And then suddenly it doesn't show up in your account. And you're like, wait, but I made the deposit. And they're like, well, where's your receipt? You know? So yeah, we just want to keep an eye on paperwork that deals with your money. Now, once that you, you know, 
aside, you might be doing paperwork to make more money. That can be an investment account, that can be uh, an application for a new job or a summer job or a part-time job, or it can mean you going over all your financials and looking at your budget. It can also mean ultimately the, remember I pulled these die and the moon is the feeling, how it feels, like what's happening is the moon. So it's your emotions, how it feels is restrictive. So anything, whoa, Capricorn, anything that feels restrictive, you want to ask yourself, is this beneficial to me? Um, Aquarius sun, Aquarius rising, is this, does this benefit me? And some things are hard and you got to get through them and you have to work at it. But other things that become, you know, repetitive that are hard and you just do it and you take it, like I said to some of the other signs, it's not necessary. It's, um, you know, it's self-abuse. So um, the third house is where it takes place and that is in your perception and also in your communication. Inner communication before you open your mouth. Inner. The perceptions around something. Oh, they're never going to pick me. Why would I do that? Hey, my kid, Aquarius Rising, entered um, an art contest at school to have their uh, art printed on the school t-shirts and then sold for the purpose of the school to make some money. Hundreds of kids entered and it's like, well, you know, maybe, I don't know, it's just a shot, you know, I don't know. And then they won and they were so happy. And um, yeah, so it's very cool. So that you can actually start to tell yourself it is possible. What's possible? What do you think is impossible? Write these things down on a piece of paper, Aquarius sun, Aquarius rising. What do you think is impossible? I'm talking practically. I'm talking about yourself, your thoughts, your vision, uh, your goals. If you think it's not possible, maybe it's because you're inexperienced. Maybe it's because you're cynical. Maybe it's because it, you, know, you don't know anyone who's ever done it. Maybe you're going to be the first. Trailblazing, aren't we now? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love it. Okay. All right. I'm going to be back on Thursday. We'll talk more about the retrograde. I hope this was helpful for people. Just let me know in the comment section. And I'm sorry if it froze and broke up. No control over the uh, technical weather. None. Thank you. So grab your hematite. And if you don't have a hematite, it's, it's really good... Um, uh, for keeping negative influences away. So if you overwhelm in large crowds, you can get a hematite ring or a bracelet or carry a little stone in your pocket. And it's a good protective um, vibe. All right, folks, I see I'm red again. So I don't know, breaking up, it's breaking up. All right, I'm gonna go be sparkly, my lovelies. And I will chat with you again on Thursday. Be well.